So uh, Gant, who you met yesterday, uh, he told me if I wanted to get your attention, I should start with a quote from him. <laughs> so here it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I could check that off. Uh, so hi, I'm Robin. You should probably know who's talking to you, so you know whether you should listen or not. Uh, so for starters, I work for Infinite Red. I think you've heard their name a couple times. <laughs> uh, I'm the director of engineering, but I still consider myself a software engineer, uh, and I build React Native apps as often as I can. I'm also a co-host of React Native Radio. Woo! <laughs> Uh, if you'd asked me five years ago if I'd be hosting a podcast, I probably would have laughed in your face. <laughs> but it's turned out to be like the coolest job I've ever had. Uh, and most importantly, I'm a mom to two future nerds, I like to call them. <laughs> uh, and hopefully they'll watch this one day and know what mom did in her office all the time. <laughs> so since all I know is software development, I'm going to start my talk, how I start my projects with some estimating. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are groaning, just humor me. I estimate it'll be done soon. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of t-shirt sizes or story points, we're going to use candy because that's more fun. Uh, you can think of a fun size as like less than a day all the way up to a king size, which is maybe four to five days, most of a week. So let's get started. Our our mission for today is to get from an empty Git repository all the way to the point where we can build our first screen. And this will be the first screen of many in an app that's going to go to production. So let's get started. The first step in any React Native app is to, of course, run React Native init. Uh, and even assuming some environmental setup, I think this is probably a, a fun size, pretty small. So we're feeling good. That's all we have to do, right? Mm. <laughs> uh, I want to introduce you to your project manager. <laughs> uh, this is condescending Wonka. You might know him from the internet. Uh, he's going to chime in and tell us what we missed and keep our estimates realistic. So, Wonka, what did we miss? Ah, navigation. Uh, that's true. In order to add a screen, yeah, we should probably have a navigation framework in place. We're going to want to do some research. Are we going to use React Navigation? Are we going to use React Native Navigation? Um, maybe we have some specific project needs. Maybe we need to support web and we want to try Expo Router. Um, let's say we've decided on React Navigation, but we know V7 just came out. That's pretty exciting. We give it a try. We spend a day or so, but then uh, there's a bug. We need to downgrade to V6. This is all going to take some time. And once you've got it set up, you still need to build your navigation scaffolding. Maybe you have some bottom tabs, a drawer, a custom header. These are all pretty important for the foundation of your app. So we're going to give it a king size, well, a king size. But that should be it. We've, we've got navigation, we can add a screen. <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. Uh, we're going to need some components and probably some theming. Um, in terms of components, we're talking about the building blocks of your app. Text, text input, button, uh, the ones that come with React Native Base are awesome, but you really want them to be configured and customized to your designs and your project needs, so you don't have to repeat yourself, uh, unlike what Colin just said. <laughs> uh, and then theming. Are you going to be supporting dark mode, this, like a dark mode and light mode? That's something you're going to want to set up right at the beginning of your project. You're going to want some sort of um, color palette and spacing scale for uh, cohesion throughout your UI. This stuff is going to be the basis for every single screen that we build, so we want to spend some time on it. 
So I gave this a king size as well. But we have navigation and we have building blocks. I mean, surely it's time to build, right? <laughs> Darn. <laughs> What's next? Ah, of course. If our screen is displaying any kind of information, that's data that needs to live somewhere. So, okay, yeah, we need to set up state management. This is probably familiar by now. Yeah, we're gonna do some research. I'm sure there's one state management library that everybody in React Native uses, right? <laughs> no? <laughs> okay, we'll have to decide if we're gonna use Redux, if we're gonna use Mavic State Tree, uh, or even just React Context. Uh, and then, of course, like once we've made that decision, we have to build our stores, set up async storage and rehydration, uh, and of course, hook it up to our screen so we can access the data. So I gave state management a king size as well because you're gonna use that a lot. And if you guess that we're not done yet, <laughs> you were right. <laughs> uh, Backend API. So we have state management, but we're gonna wanna get some data to put into it. Uh, so we're gonna need a backend API. Um, you might need to do some research about whether you're gonna do REST, GraphQL, maybe you're gonna try to go serverless with something like Firebase, or maybe you're working with a backend team that has already decided this for you, but you're still gonna have to build some kind of service layer that will store configuration and maybe have some helper functions to make requests. Uh, so I gave backend API a regular size, not, not quite a king size, but still important. That has, that has to be it though, right? You would, you would think, not quite. I18N, sometimes overlooked, sometimes overlooked, but this is an app that's gonna go to production. And the best practice is really gonna be to set up internationalization so that we can support English, Spanish, whatever languages we're gonna need. So you know the drill. We're gonna research what library to use. We're probably gonna to wanna to add some type safety. And surprise, our app has to support right to left languages. So given all that, I also gave IE18N a regular size. Is it finally time? What do you guys think? Yes. So let's take a look at our backlog. We need to initialize our React Native app, add navigation, add basic components and theming, state management, backend API, and I18N. And for a single dev, in our experience, this would probably take about three to four weeks. But imagine doing this with five to six projects at a time. This was Infinite Red back in 2015, 2016. We were an agency that had just picked up React Native. We were doing lots of projects for clients and trying to find the best way to do React Native apps. Eventually, we kind of fell into this cycle of innovation and integration. We would experiment while we were building a project. We would learn what worked well and what didn't work well. And we would collect what we learned in whatever way we could, usually just posting on Slack about what we were doing. And then we would start a new project and we would incorporate what we learned. And then that project would become a new test bed for innovation and experimentation. But we really wanted a better way to capture and disseminate the things that we were learning. So we created Ignite. Ignite is our React Native starter kit. It's both a CLI and a boilerplate, and it gives us a starting point for all of the React Native apps that we build. Uh, around Infinite Red, we tend to use Ignite as a verb more than a noun. Do you need a demo? Just ignite an app really quick. Does your client need a proof of concept? Uh, just, just ignite something. Are you starting a new two year long production client project? Well, the first JIRA ticket is gonna be ignite the app. And the second JIRA ticket will be build a feature. This is in our lexicon every single day. 
We use it that much, and that's why we say that it's battle-tested. Not only is it a way for us to fast forward through those three to four weeks, but it's also a way for us to distill everything that we learn and know into something that's usable and also shareable. I already shared a quote from Gantt, but I'll share a quote from Jamin as well. Ignite may or may not be the best way, but is for sure a good way. Which is to say, we aren't naive enough to think that there's only one way. And we know there are a bunch of great boilerplates now and over the years, but Ignite is the infinite red way, and it's based on our nearly a decade of React Native experience, of trial and error, of iteration, of success, and we've built our business on it. It has proven itself as a workhorse on real apps time and time again. So instead of spending three to four weeks, when we start an app, we just ignite it. So uh, for the next part of the talk, I'm gonna talk about our goodie bag, uh, some of the, the cool little things that are in Ignite that have come out of that innovation and integration cycle. We're gonna get a little bit more technical, you'll see some code. Starting with navigation. Ignite uses React Navigation, and you'll start with a fully configured tab navigator with four tabs, which is such a common pattern that I don't remember the last client project that did not have four bottom tabs. <laughs> Just say. Um, we worked out all the configuration already. There's some safe area issues. There's some um, styling of the tab icons and the labels, uh, the logic around figuring out which uh, tab is focused and changing the styling. None of this is like groundbreaking stuff, but it can be time consuming to set up every time. And the truth is, nobody memorizes this. Even if you've done it 10, 15, 20 times, you still probably need to look it up. And I can tell you from experience, the easiest place to look something up is right in your project. <laughs> uh, we also have this like cool branching logic around authentication. Um, one of the first problems you'll run into in any app that has a login screen is how do you prevent unauthenticated users from accidentally viewing a screen that they shouldn't? And while the answer is to do this, completely swap out the screens in the stack. But if this looks familiar to you, it's because it's straight from the React navigation docs, which are fantastic, and we include a link right to them. But the only thing better than the docs is the docs plus an example in a working code base. Drawers, I love drawers. <laughs> they can be tricky though to get right and to make look good. Uh, and they're also often one of the first things that you build. We have an example using React Native drawer layout. Uh, and if that's not enough, did you check out that cool, that cool little animation? Here, I slowed it down for you. Um, you can see the bars kind of squeeze together. It's fun, it's a nice little touch, and it's a great way for us to include examples of React Native reanimated. That's just a taste of navigation, but that is one ticket that we can check off our backlog. Let's talk about some UI. This is what comes in your component folder, right out of the box. We have heavy hitters like button, text, text field. We also have some fun ones like toggle, which also happens to be a checkbox and a radio button. We have an auto image component which automatically sizes your remote images, no more uh, specifying width and height. Um, we have a list item with a built-in separator which is not as exciting, but I promise you'll use it over and over and over and over again. <laughs> Generally, we're able to use these components as is on the majority of our projects, uh, and they're capable of adapting to incredibly varied designs and requirements. And that's because we take the approach of giving you the code. This isn't a component library where you're customizing your components with a bunch of different props. We just give you the code and you can make it what you need to make it, or not use it at all if that suits you. This is our text component. Every app has text, 
probably on every screen. So this one is in heavy rotation. The first thing you'll probably notice is that it's a single element. It doesn't have a closing, opening and closing tag. It's just a single. And you can pass text directly or through the TX prop, which is uh, an IETNN key. Uh, it comes with presets like subheading and heading, or you can pass size and weight directly if you prefer. Buttons, almost as ubiquitous as text, I would say. It's how your users interact with your application. And we know that Pressable has become the new standard for anything that's touchable by the user, but it doesn't include any logic for changing the styling based on the press state. So we include that for you. And we also include things like disabled state, uh, accessories on the left and right, um, just a useful little component. This is one of my favorites. Uh, similar to something Colin mentioned, actually. Uh, we have what we call our screen wrapper. It handles keyboard avoidance, scrolling, safe area views, a bunch of stuff that you're gonna do on every screen. So when it's time to add a new screen, you can get right to adding the content. Theming. So when it comes to theming, we are strong believers in not overthinking it. <laughs> so we just have an exported spacing scale. It has pretty common sense properties uh, and it's helpfully typed so you don't have to remember what size your XL or your medium was every time. Similarly with colors, um, we have a color object with roles like text, background. This is really useful for light mode and dark mode. Uh, because you only have to change the background color one place. And then there's a palette with named hex codes. Uh, so you don't have hex strings laying around your app. So one more thing we can check off our backlog. Let's talk about state management. <laughs> but before we start, I'm gonna ask you some questions. Are you ready? <laughs> the only answer is over. <laughs> What about this one? Pineapple? No pineapple. Hmm? <laughs> this, this one's a, a hot debate in my own household, so. This one's easy, right? <laughs> uh, just like all the great debates, <laughs> um, we understand that state management is very personal or organizational. And there's not one right answer, even though there's right answers to those other questions. <laughs> there are considerations like what you're already using, what you're used to, but just like anything else, if you ask us, we'll have an opinion. So Ignite uses Mavic State Tree. Woo. Woo. <laughs> um, and we use it because it works really well for the apps that we build, um, and we like it. Uh, in Ignite, we include uh, setup for your root store, examples of your store and your models, async storage and rehydration. But for the times when you need to use Redux, Zestand, whatever, we have your back via the Ignite cookbook, which I'll talk about a little bit more towards the end, but know that you are not locked into Mavic State Tree if you use Ignite. So let's check that one off and move to I18N. Out of the box, Ignite is translated into English, French, Korean, and some Arabic, which in and of itself is a really great head start. But not only have we installed I18N, we've set up some great little developer experience goodies. Does anyone else add a translation, flip back to their screen, and completely forget what they just named it? No, that's just me, okay. <laughs> Luckily, I'm pretty spoiled by Ignite, and we have very helpful autocomplete, but I still get it wrong sometimes. <laughs> Who loves seeing this error? That's embarrassing. <laughs> Let's get a better red line, shall we? Uh, type safety. Who doesn't love type safety? It's so cool. Uh, these are small things that make a huge difference in the day-to-day -day happiness of our developers. 
And finally, something that isn't talked about a lot is right to left support. And you might think that it's as simple as adding this style to your text. Writing direction RTL. Seems easy. Something you may not know about right to left is that it's not just the text, it's the entire UI. The navigation header is reversed, uh, the screens slide in from the other direction, toggles go the other direction. You, we even see that the tab bar at the bottom is reversed. The drawer is also reversed, including the close icon. Uh, the, it's like all over your app, uh, it's not trivial. And so having a head start with a bunch of examples can go a long way. To be honest, this could honestly be a whole talk. Uh, so if you're interested, you should go to React Universe and listen to uh, Maz and Chami. He'll be giving a talk on this in September. So let's check off IATN. I really wish I could talk about Ignite all day, but I think Ken's probably gonna kick me off the stage pretty soon. Uh, so I have some honorable mentions. Um, in terms of backend API setup, we do have a uh, a working REST API with a full round trip from screen to API to state management and back to screen. Um, we also have generators, which healthily Colin described for me, so I don't have to talk about him. Um, <laughs> but with one command, you can uh, generate a screen component or model uh, from an EJS template. Uh, we also have generators for app icon and splash screen, which are my favorite one image, one command, and it's all the assets you need. Um, and then, of course, I have to talk about Expo. Um, you probably haven't heard me mention Expo yet, but that's just because Expo is so ubiquitous through Ignite, it's, it's not even just one thing. So, um, of course, Infinite Red loves Expo, and Ignite has full Expo integration, including EAS, but we know that Expo isn't right for every single project, and so when you uh, Ignite an app with the CLI, it will give you the option for going plain vanilla as well. And finally, uh, I previewed it already, but we have Ignite Cookbook. We know that apps are much more than these core foundations. So a few years ago, we created Ignite Cookbook. And while the boilerplate is for what's in every app, the cookbook is for everything else. If you're a Redux user, there's a recipe for that. If you're an Expo router user, there's a recipe for that. If you wanna use PowerSync or Vision Camera or MMKV, we have recipes for that. And these are written by us, but also by you. So this is a great way to join the community and add something that, you're, that you don't see in Ignite. We've talked a lot about the code and Ignite has a ton of great code, but this is the real value in Ignite. Years and years of this. So here's Frank, he's here, I think he's back here, but you can say hi. <laughs> here he is asking about something that's been tried on a client project. And here's Mark, Mark's also here. Hi Mark. <laughs> uh, he's giving feedback on how it's been working. This conversation led to a pull request in Ignite. And this, this was like a month ago, these screenshots are recent. This type of conversation is real world and it's what makes Ignite better and better. I wanna leave you with this. We don't talk about Ignite because it makes us money. We talk about it because we love it and because we think it makes the community better and we share what we learn even if it, make, even if it means giving away a little bit of our secret sauce. And the best news for you is that Ignite is open source and Infinite Red is here today. We're available to answer your questions on how this can work for you. You can find us in the red shirts, just like Frank here. <laughs> so if you have an idea, when would be a better time to try it? Remember to use ignite as a verb. Uh, I'm Robin Hines and I have candy if you come talk to me about ignite. So. <laughs> Thank you.